Welcome back everyone to learning petition. We're in statics and we're going to do problem 8-4, okay? It says the winch on the truck is used to hoist the garbage bin onto the bed of the truck. If the loaded bin has a weight of 8,500 pounds and center of gravity at G's, determine the force in the cable needed to begin the left. So they're talking about this cable. The coefficients of a static friction at A and B are mu of a is equal to 0 0.3 and mu of b is equal to 0 0.2 neglect the height of the support at a okay so we're here in this new chapter and in this new chapter the we're going to have fun <laughs> and basically what i mean by fun is that the friction we're going to have some forces let's say in this case the force at a is going to be equal to mu of a times the normal at a that's why i'm saying fun because some people read it as the f u and okay the fun equation now let's start by solving this problem and it, in order to solve this problem what do you guys expect like always we're going to just have a free body diagram okay so here is our free body diagram and we are going to do the free body diagram of our bean so we have our bin in here, our rectangular bin. Now at A, at this point in here, we'll have a normal reaction that we're going to call NA. Now, as this cable wants to move the bin in this direction, the bin in this part is, uh, the surface is in here like this, is horizontal. Therefore, the friction will want to go into our left side so we're going to have a friction going to the left and as i explained before the friction force is equal to so in this case f of a it's going to be equal to mu of a times the normal at a okay so if we plug the value of mu of a which is 0 0.3 then we'll have that this is equal to 0 0.3 na okay the normal a then what else do we have well we have the center uh with the mass of the trash of the garbage let's see and this is equal to 8500 pounds what else do we have now at b if we play really close attention so i'm going to zoom in we realize that our point b in here it's Con it's having a contact with this surface and this surface is at an angle okay so and we also have the tension in here this tension that this cable is doing this cable t and this is what we need to determine so we have the tension that is in this direction so let's call it my tension t now as i explained before we have a surface in this direction therefore my normal at b will be at this direction so normal B it will be 90 degrees with respect to that that surface so will be 90 degrees from here okay now since the surface is in this direction then the friction at my point B will be opposite to that tension meaning meaning that it's going to go diagonally down and left okay so we can state that this force over here is going to be my friction at B. And what do we know? Well, we're going to use our form equation. So my friction at B is equal to mu of V times the normal at B. Now, we know mu of B is equal to 0 0.2. Therefore, we can put this as 0 0.2 and B, okay? I'm going to add what is the inclination of this surface, which is 30 degrees. So let me erase here and let's add that inclination into our diagram. So we have that from respect to our x axis, we got 30 degrees. And then if we have 30 degrees and we knew that from here to here was 90, then this other force MB is 60 degrees with respect to my x axis. And MB is just going to be 30 degrees as well. You just for the law of the opposite angle, they have to be equal. Now that we have this, 
what do we do well we're going to do summatory forces moments and all that right so let's check it out we have an a we have n b and we have tension so we have three unknowns three equations so with this three unknowns three equations we can do our summatory forces now uh, if we pay close, really close attention, if we were to do a moment around my point B, so in here, we can cancel T, we can cancel NV, we can cancel this NV, and we're left with NA, NA, and 85 pounds. And actually, this NA doesn't have a distance with my point B in here, okay? So, that's even better. We can start by doing that, so we're going to do the summatory of moments around my point B. We're going to assume that going counterclockwise is positive, and what do we have? So before we actually do that, we need to know what's the distances in order to do our moments. But they're given in our problem. This is 10 feet in here. This is 12 feet. And that's all we need. Okay. So we're holding here. And if we start with NA, it will want to rotate me clockwise. So we'll have negative NA multiplied by the distance. Well, the distance will be this plus this will give me... 22 feet and then we have this force this 8500 force going down in here so it will make a counterclockwise rotation 80, 8500 pounds multiplied by the distance with respect to my point b so from here and here is equal to 12 so we got 12 and all this should be equal to zero because this doesn't count don't count doesn't have distance doesn't have any distance so we're done if we solve for NA, well, we'll have 8,500 times 12 divided by 22. If we plug this into our calculator, let's see what do we get. So, we should get equal to 4,636.4 pounds, okay? So, we solve one of, of our unknowns, okay? The next thing that we can do is that we're going to do the summatory of forces in the x direction. We're going to assume that going to the right is positive. And let's see what do we have. Well, let's just start from here. We get 0 0.3 of negative of 0 0.3 of Na. Na we found it out to be 46, 136.4. Then what else do we have? Then we have this 0 0.2 NB and we are going to do negative 0 0.2 NB. And let's not forget that this, we need only this amount, which will be the cosine of 30. So we need the X component of that, which was that. Then we have the negative of this other NB. So we got negative NB multiplied by the cosine of 60. And then we have positive t multiplied by cosine of 30, okay, for this force, the x component of that force. And all this should be equal to zero, okay? Now, we have two unknowns. We have nb, we have uh, nb again, and t, okay? So we have two unknowns. We cannot solve for any of those so far. So what we're going to do is that we're going to set this equation into first, combine all nb, then plus com all the t's combined equal to the numbers I have to like as a number I mean like this guy who doesn't have any unknowns okay so let's start by combining nb's so I got negative 0 0.2 multiplied by cosine of 30 and negative cosine of 60 so if I plug that into my calculator I'll have negative 0 0.67 three two and b's okay plus and then we're going to do cosine of 30 will give me 0 0.866 of t this should be equal to and then we pass this entire number to the other side to n becomes positive and it becomes a thousand three hundred and ninety point nine okay and to this guy, we're going to call it equation one, okay? So we have our equation one. And what we're going to do is try to find another equation. So we're going to do some material forces in the y direction. 
and we're going to assume that going up is positive let's see what do we have well let's just start from the left we got positive na so positive 4636.4 pounds then we have negative 8500 right then we have negative the y component of this force in here so the force is 0 0.2 nb and the y component will be sine of 30 okay then we have positive of this y component of this force so we got mb sine of 60 degrees and then we'll have positive t sine of 30 degrees and all this should be equal to zero we're going to do the same thing that we did in order to find our equation one we're going to add all our mbs so we got negative 0 0.2 sine 30 and then we got positive sine 60 okay so if we do that addition we will get that this is equal to positive 0 0.766 nb then we need our t's which is sine of 30 sine of 30 will give me half so half of t should be equal to and then the addition of these two guys we're going to pass it to the other side of the equation and we have that this will be equal to let's see what this will be equal to we, this will be equal to positive 3863.6 okay and to this guy we're going to call it equation two if you guys have seen my seen my videos before, you guys like uh, you know that I like solving uh, system of equations by matrices. So basically, we're going to solve using matrices, okay? And the way that I do that is that I'm going to multiply a matrix that is going to have first the values of n b in the first column, meaning that for first equation so this will be equation one this will be equation two this will be the values of n b this will be the values of t and in here we will have later on you will guys will know that the other side of the equation that i like to call right hand side okay so on n b we have negative 0 0.6732 so for equation one I'm plugging in the value for NB, which is this amount. And then for T, I will plug in this value, which is 0 0.866. Then I'm going to close my matrix, and then I'm going to multiply it by this other matrix. And let's not forget this matrix is inversed when you plug it into the calculator. Okay? So now the right-hand side, for my equation 1, I got 1390.9. Then we go to equation two. So in equation two, we plug in this value for MB, this value for T, and this value for right hand side. So we got 0 0.766, 0 0.5 for my T, and then I got 3863.6 in here. Okay. So when we plug all these into our calculator, and let's not forget to do the inverse of this first matrix. Then we will find out that my answer, so this will give me the answer, is equal to 2650 and 3,666. Okay, now, what does this mean? Well, what it means is that in the same order that we plug in these values for NB and for T, so first is NB, then is T, then we're going to have this is equal to nb and this will be equal to t so we found out that the nb is equal to 2650 pounds and found out that t is equal to 3666 pounds okay so we found our answer for our problem if you guys like the video please push the like button subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next